Hey, um, this is Stacia, and I'm ready to show you guys the final round of my tournament um, in late December 2019, the Cleveland Holiday Open. And at this point in the tournament, I was sitting pretty good, I think. Um, let's see, I had a full point by, a win, and a draw. So 2.5 out of 4. And so entering the last round, I was really hungry for a win. Um, although my opponent was a kid, which you always have to watch out for kids. They're often lower rated than they seem, or higher rated than they seem. And my opponent was rated 1525, and his name was Samrat. And um, I call him the adjust kid, <laughs> and I'll tell you why. Um, so I want to start off this video a little different than normal, okay? I'm going to show you um, the report because it's really interesting to me. Um, what you see here is chess.com's analysis. 98.9 .9 accuracy for him. I played black, 98.0 accuracy. And as you can see, I had one blunder, and that decided the game. But actually, I don't think the blunder decided the game. It was actually one of the inaccuracies, pretty sure. Well, we'll find out. But as you can see, the game is pretty even. I was even better for a second. I wonder what moment this was. Yeah, I think I know. Okay, and, um, and then it was over. So um, I'm going to show you what happened this game. I think it's really instructive. And... Um, we're going to go through the opening and middle game quickly so that we can get to the juicy end game stuff because that is where all of the madness took place. Okay, so uh, Samrat played d4 and I played knight f6 and I'm pretty sure that uh, something happened already. <laughs> this is how he got his nickname. So Samrat likes to adjust his pieces and Samrat, if you're watching, Please don't take offense, but we should have a chat about this. Um, so I move my knight, and what he does is he says adjust, and he grabs your piece across the board and places it perfectly in the square. While I also enjoy pieces in the middle of the square, I think it's a bit, it's a bit much. Um, yeah, and Samrat, maybe you don't know, but it's kind of inconsiderate to do that, so I don't recommend doing that if you're watching. Um, instead, you know, well, I guess I don't know what to do instead. I guess instead live with it. You probably shouldn't adjust your opponent's pieces unless they're a really gross violation. You know, like if they're right on the line or something, then yeah, sure. But I don't think um, it's polite to... Um, reach across the board and adjust your opponent's pieces. Okay, so there we go. Um, but otherwise, you're a nice kid, so don't think <laughs> don't think anything bad by that. All right, and it was a pleasure playing you, by the way. Okay, let's continue. Knight f3, d5. And yeah, I was actually a little upset to see knight f3. I would have preferred c4 and c5 and go into my Bank of Gambit stuff, but okay. We have a London system, and... Um, I play the bishop f5 lines against this, like reverse London system. And, um, okay. I will mention that here, um, the game can get crazy if white decides to play the move c4, which looks like a natural move, but I've actually looked at this in some detail. Here, black can take the knight. And, um, let's see. If they take with a rook, which sometimes happens, you can play check. And um, this happens in a lot of blitz games. And now it's it's difficult to deal with this check, right? I mean, you pretty much have to go king e2, which is what a lot of people do here. Um, but because if you block with the knight, I have knight e5 attacking the pin piece, and white's going to lose material. So I don't advise c4. But my opponent did not play that. He played bishop d3. That's a normal move. I pretty much always um, take here. Bishop g6 is probably a move, but I don't mind these lines where I take. 
The idea for me is that my bishop is outside the pawn chain, so it's not a problem bishop for me on c8. And if it's off the board, exchanging it for white's powerful um, light square bishop seems reasonable to me. Okay, and now I challenge his bishop. He backs up to g3. Now if I take, he will open his h file, so I prefer to wait on that if possible. And knight b to d7. I've played this move a lot in a lot of blitz games. And um, I actually don't mind this structure. I think this is quite good for black. I like having the open c file. And I like that I can maybe play e5. And this is a comfortable game, so I don't mind that. Um, Samurai recognized not to uh, take there. And knight b to d2. Queen e7. And yeah, it was... Probably at this point in the game that I had my first think when I played queen e7, um, c3, because I wasn't sure what side to castle on. And I knew that knight e5 was coming very soon. And he was delaying his castling as well. And also, I can't really take here until, well, I prefer not to take until he castles one way or the other. If he goes this way, then maybe I'll castle queenside and so I can still take. But if he goes this way, I'll just take and doubles pawns. So, okay. C3. Castles. Castles. And now that he's castled, it makes sense to take the bishop on g3 because now the h file isn't so effective. There's no rook on h1. And c5. I'm going to have a sip of my red wine. It's actually about, let's see, 10 o'clock on Tuesday night. Okay, and I recall that here I was feeling really comfortable. I think the fact that I got c5 in without any trouble meant that I was at least equal here. And let's see what the computer says. I haven't used a, it yet. Yeah, computer agrees. So I, I basically equalized with this move c5. Also taking here and doubling the pawns. I would almost think black might be better slightly, but white still has an extra tempo, so maybe not. Okay, he played rook here. I went, hmm, a6. Yeah, I don't know about this move. It's fine. I'm seeing if the computer likes it. Yeah, the computer actually likes it. I didn't want the queen to come here attacking my pawn. Is there some other reason? That seems like a silly thing to be worried about. <laughs> like, couldn't I just play b6 if that happened? Like, let's see. Like, if he went here, uh, can't I just play b6? b6 is wrong. Yeah, I didn't know about rook fb8 or rook ab8. Yeah, rook ab8 is fine. Oh, I see why, because I'm going to play a6 and kick the queen. So it's silly to even play queen b5. Okay, so a6 not necessary. I think I was, you know, I was thinking about playing b5 too. I recall that now. Okay, I don't want to spend a lot of time in the opening or the middle game. <laughs> now a lot of exchanges took place. Takes, takes. I like this too because I have knight f6 with tempo on the queen. The queen must move. And now I took here. He took with the knight. Queen d7. I still felt good here. I mean, I think I felt like he gained a little bit of initiative. Computer says it's equal because this is going to happen and it does happen. But I like the move queen d5. This is a station move, but. Yeah, let's see. I think it's actually okay. Okay, so it is okay. There's better moves, though. Um, rook behind is better. Oh, and I see why. Because um, I don't have to fear this because it reverses it and pins the knight. If the knight were to move, I could take, take, take with check. So that's two rooks for a queen, though. 
And I think I wasn't sure about that, so that's why I went for this move. So he took, knight takes, c4. So I saw this, I thought this was all fine. And now basically I want to challenge him on the D file and um, offer a draw. I think I might be slightly worse here, maybe, because he has the queen side majority, but he does also have double pawns. I think though that these are, are not necessarily horrible for him. Okay. So I challenged him, he brought his king up. I said, okay, I'll do that too. And yeah, this move, knight e5, this is a menacing move. And honestly, I thought the game turned a little bit right here. And I think it did because I didn't react correctly. Yeah, king e7 gives white some advantage. So this is why I have so much to learn about the endings. Um, king e7 is a mistake in my opinion, not just an inaccuracy like the computer is probably saying. Let's see what it calls it. King e7. It says it's good. Okay, you can't believe the computer here. I want it to fix the screen, okay. You can't believe the computer's assessment that it's good because um, I think h5 is much, much better. Okay, and um, the reason is, I didn't know this idea during the game. But the computer started to after. And the reason is, I think um, now white cannot really undouble their pawns. You know, and um, if this, I could even just take it and win a pawn. And if this, this, I take it, and then white is left with two isolated pawns, which is worse, and this becomes a pass pawn. So h5, I mean, this is also a space gaining move. And um, yeah, I didn't understand that king e7 could be bad. And it's not bad. I mean, like, it's playable. It's just that white had some advantage after this, and the computer is saying h5 is equal. And I probably don't fully understand why, I'll be honest with you guys. So I'm learning this kind of stuff uh, with you. Okay, so king e7. f3, I'm also not sure. Better is g4. Yeah, computer wants to play g4. So h5 is designed to stop that. Okay. Yeah, and this was my plan to challenge the knight. I thought... um. I mean, I'm threatening to take because it's not really defended. If I take, is it though? Maybe it is. No, it is. He can take here first. So let's say he does nothing. Now I'm threatening to take here and after takes, my knight survives. So he has to take here. But the nice thing about this is I do have the D file. And black slightly better. Makes sense. Okay, so he took my knight, and I think this is probably a good decision by him. I took here. Yeah, king e2. I miss king e2. I thought for sure he would play here. But the problem with all this is that... Um, he has the, the D file and I don't, so this happened. Yeah, and now my king ended up on D8 and his king ended up on E2. So, hmm, I like king, A, king E2 on his part because I couldn't really advance my king because there were going to be trades on D7. And, well, my king was going to end up on D8 either way. So I got a little bit tricked there. So now I'm worse, um, simply based on king position. King position matters a lot in the end game. Grandmaster Ben Feingold says that all the time. 
And I was aware of that. Unfortunately, I couldn't get my king up more than this. And the game became very tense here. Now, I will tell you that I offered a draw probably three times <laughs> up until this point at various points in the game, starting with the when the rook ending first started. You know, my thought was that my opponent's about the same rating as me, and he might be strong, and um, he probably has a slight edge. So I kept, so I offered a draw at the chance that he might want to leave the tournament as well and just be done. But no such luck, and I give uh, Samra a lot of um, credit for fighting and playing fighting chess and fighting on because it pays off this game, as you'll see. So I played f6. I don't think I played this part the best, but I want to get to the critical position. c5 check, the best move. Move my king over. Both of us had ample time on our clocks. B5 check. Okay. And this is the position that I want to show you. Okay. And um, here's the key position. So um, I just, I was doing this and I decided to set it up different because um, what we're going to do is play this against computer level 10. And um, that's a 2600 um, level computer on chess.com basically, maybe stronger by now. And I'm going to show you um, systematically why all these moves lose. So we have this move, we have f5, we have e5, and we have king c7. We'll do the king move last because I don't think it makes sense until you look at f5. So um, e5 loses. Okay, this is a pretty simple one. We take. Now the king should come towards it. Okay, and the idea is I'm trying to distract the king to get my pawn. I'm going to take here. But now I'm just not fast enough. Yeah, and I can defend my pawn for a second, but then he goes here, and I'm in zigzag, so I got nothing. And um, sadly, if this pawn wasn't here, um, this would be a draw. But um, since this pawn is here, it's going to afford white an extra tempo. And so when I try to um, get stalemated, white can play g4. And I'll show that really quickly so you can see it. Yeah, like, if this pawn wasn't here, then... Oh, wow. Actually, never mind. I don't have the opposition anyway. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, so this, this would be lost anyway. So I have to make sure to get the opposition. There was another line where I had it. And I, got, I got the lines confused. Okay. So let's go back. That's lost. King e4. On move 42. All right. So, um, yeah, in fact, let's let's try this one more time because I want to see if I can get the line where I get the opposition. This is what I calculated during the game. And I saw it was losing. Oh, yeah. Um... I actually think I actually think king f8 is a better move because when he takes I get the opposition. So now this is what I was talking about. If this pawn wasn't here, this would be a draw. I would go here and the computer I'm sure is going to demonstrate. Okay, I go back. He comes up. I go here. Check. And now I go king g8 and normally this would be stalemate and would have been stalemate. But just as in the real game, my opponent did play g4. And now I'm just lost. Yeah, I got nothing to do. So there you go. So that's e5. We rolled that one out. Okay, now let's look at the move I calculated. This one. It's a little bit tricky, but not as tricky as f5. In fact, it's probably not tricky at all. <laughs> yeah, so... Um, 
And now I thought maybe I could play here, but I think g5 is kind of obvious looking at this now. g5. I think I tricked myself <laughs> because now I have to take this and this is a pass pawn and I'm not even in the square of the pawn. I can't get there. So even if I could get there, this pawn runs. So that is lost. So, okay. So taking the pawn right away also loses. So we have looked at e5 and we have looked at this. And the computer showed us why both lose. Now it's time for the trickiest move, f5. Perhaps this is trickier. I'm not sure, but it looks worse to my eye, but my eye's not very good. <laughs> f5. Okay, this has to be played. Now I'm going to show you something. If I go f5 and white takes this way, it's actually a draw. So that's why this is the trickiest move. And um, I'll try to show with arrows since I'm playing with the computer right now. If I take here and white takes here, now we have a similar variation where my pawn is running down the board, but the difference is, um, okay, let's try this again. F5 takes, takes, then takes, takes. Now my, I have the move F4 coming, creating a pass pawn. The king would come over and I play F5 and he takes and takes. Now I have a pass pawn on F4 and he has a pass pawn on B5. And this will be a draw because now there's no extra pawn. So he's going to march over and win my pawn, and I'm going to win his pawn, and that would be a draw because there's only kings left on the board. <laughs> so for that reason, the computer doesn't blunder that way. Um, after f5, the computer does the correct move, which is to take this way. Now, I have to take this pawn as forced, otherwise he's playing here. And now the king comes over. So again, this affords white another chance to blunder. Like I'll go back for a second. If I take here and then they take here, it's the same thing as before. I will take, and now I'm going to play f5, and they play king c, c4, and I go here. And it's one pawn against one pawn once again. So that would be a draw. So the computer smart doesn't do that. <laughs> f5 takes, I take, and now king c4. Now this is a waiting move, and it also puts black in zigzag pretty much. Um, if I take this pawn, then I have this pass pawn, which can be easily collected, and then white is going to march over here, take my other pawn, and then win, because I'm not fast enough to get, get the opposition. Um, so that loses. If I take here, then this, <laughs> then this happens. So, and this is what's hard to see, like in the calculation when all the pawns are still there, but, um, at least for me. So I can't play there. So if I can't play here and I can't play here and I can't move this pawn, then this is the next move to consider. Well, if I play that, then pawn takes here, and that's queening. I cannot come and get that pawn. I can get in the square of the pawn, but then this pawn. Check. So if I can't take here, and I can't play here, and I can't play this, then I have to play a king move. And a king move, the only reasonable one really is this, and then probably king c5 or b6 check. I don't know, but everything loses. Let's, let's, the computer went there. So yeah, I probably have to stay in front of the B pawn and he can probably just come win my pawns now. I'm going to take your B pawn computer. What do you think of that? <laughs> it doesn't care. Yeah, this is going to be, okay, I have to take. So now white doesn't have the extra tempo, but it doesn't matter. These are the key squares. 
and um, white's going to win because of that. And I'll just go ahead and show. Yeah, this pawn is queening. The king, I teach my kids this in class. <laughs> the king is escorting the pawn. So there you go. Um, we have one more move to consider. So move 42, king b4. Okay. So we've ruled out e5, we've ruled out takes, and we've ruled out f5, which is the trickiest move. This might be trickier, but I'm not sure why. King c7 is the top computer move. I didn't even really consider this during the game. I ruled it out as quickly as I ruled out h5. Um, I just thought king c5 should be played without any thought. This just looks horrible for black. My only hope is to probably play f5 here. And again, this is the same variation as before. I'm going to take here and now, okay, this is even worse because I have to go here. Yeah, and I'm in Zigzwang once again. So same thing. I can't take here because then this isn't a pass pawn anymore. It's just vulnerable. Um, I can't play, I can't play here because it's illegal. I can't play here because white will take this way. And if I move my king, <laughs> I like king c6 for white. Yeah. And the computer is really just like making me feel really bad right now. Oh no, I'm going to queen. <laughs> yeah, computer's like, no, you're not. I'm going to queen. <laughs> okay, so there you go. Um, I hope you enjoyed this game. Um, this was a painful one for me, but truly instructional. Oh, one last thing. One last thing, you guys. Um, yeah, hang on a second. Bear with me for a second, okay? So the thing about all these variations that was nearly impossible to know, um, but the computer knew, is that because all of these endings were losing, that means that black made a mistake earlier in the game. And it was a slight mistake, probably. And I forget what it was, but we're going to look at it. So let me fix the screen real quick. Okay, hang on. Sorry about this. Very sorry about this. Okay, I think this is sufficient. Okay, so um, where did I go wrong then? Computer says white's winning. White's winning. Okay, white's not winning. Yep, white's winning. <laughs> well, it's it's some um solace to me that even the computer takes a few seconds to find out. Okay, wait, this though. No, white's still winning. C takes B6. Um, here, this is the moment. This is the moment, and I know we flew through this in the analysis, but, um, okay, I played the move. Is this right? Wow. Yeah, I played the move, the move B6, and this loses the game. This loses the game. Hard to see, because in order to know this is losing and not drawing, you would have to see all of this. And in this position, rule out all the candidate moves that I mentioned, which you'd even have to rule out h5, you'd have to rule out here, you'd have to rule out here. 
everything we looked at would have to be ruled out from this position. So if anybody knows, let me know, because I'd be really curious. Can masters do that from that position? Because let's go back now to where I played b6. So in this position, could you see the position after king b4 on move 42 and rule out, oh, this candidate moves? Um, honestly, now that I'm looking at it, this structure is all the same. So the answer is probably yes. But during the game, I didn't even think um, to look that far ahead. And after a4, I just thought this is my best try. But it turns out that my best try is actually a5. A5, I actually have a few moves that king d7, king c7. So I guess the real lesson is that I shouldn't play a forcing move and a concrete move like b6 unless I look at capture, capture, all that stuff that we looked at, and, um, and then see that final position with the pawn on b5 and with my king on b b6 and this king here. Wait, actually my, my king was here. So with the with the king on b4, is that right? No, it was this. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> See why my calculation is terrible? Okay. So um but here basically I have to sit tight and play a waiting move. Now a5 is not a waiting move though. So a5 is interesting. So we're attacking this pawn. Play b5 check. I saw this during the game. I recall this. I didn't like this after king c7. But I guess the point is, you know, if he goes check, then my king gets nestled in here. And the counterplay has, has stopped. And that, that probably is a draw. Um, but now you have to start considering king moves. Like king e3. Am I in zigzag now? Wow, f5 still a move. Wow, there's a lot going on here. All right, so this is a whole nother study, you guys. But um, I hope that you enjoyed the game and you understand why um, end game is important and it's and why calculation is incredibly important in the end game because I know that's what I learned. Um, because I thought I was getting a draw this game, but the Adjust Kid had uh, something different to say. All right, thanks for watching. Bye. Mm -hmm.